there. My name is Carl Soule, and I work with the Adobe Hollywood team, and we're focused on film and television workflows uh, for products like Premiere Pro and After Effects. Uh, we have a special group of engineers that are based down here um, in the LA market. And again, we've, we're the ones who, uh, when you see like different film and television engagements using Adobe software, um, one of the things that we actually do is we try and test out new features if there's a particular production that we think would benefit for some, something that we have going on in the lab. We'll actually uh, provide that version to them early, get their feedback, incorporate their feedback into the uh, release of the feature, um, and then uh, when that gets released publicly, everybody benefits. It's a much more robust uh, t well tested feature um, that uh, has benefited from being in an actual real world production environment. Um, this past March we actually released one of the largest features from the film team yet. Uh, this is something new called Adobe Productions. And Adobe Productions um, it's a new way of working if you're in a collaborative environment where you've got a lot of different assets where it helps you organize um, a large amount of assets and also break them up into smaller chunks that different editors can be working on simultaneously with no danger of anybody uh, stepping on each other's work, no danger of anybody overwriting something that someone else is working on. Um, productions were released in the April update to Premiere Pro and uh, they've been very, very well received. And we've, we're seeing people using this for documentary filmmaking, for episodic television, whether you're talking about YouTube or you're talking about in a broadcast environment. And it incorporates a project locking model and it incorporates um, just the ability to have a lot of different projects that are all especially linked together in a unique way. It allows you to break apart your workflow so that you can have your media clips stored in a set of projects that everybody accesses and every editor can have their own simple lightweight project with just some editing sequences in it um, and they're pulling the media from the the same projects that everybody else is pulling from so very very robust feature it was tested out on films like terminator dark fate and dolomite is my name on netflix um, and uh, it's being used in a lot of different uh, productions Today, we still have uh, some additional things we're testing out with it, and there's some additional fi films, such as the film Mank from uh, David Fincher, are using it uh, now. Um, that was just one of the new announcements that we, uh, we announced back in April. There were a lot of uh, new releases to the different software applications, uh, a lot of new functionality that was added into the software. And as part of that announcement, we also started a new beta program that is open to everybody. Um, the new open beta program is something that's found directly inside of the Creative Cloud desktop application. And if you want to get a sneak peek at what we are working on, um, feel free to download the betas. They actually install separately and can live side by side with your existing copies of applications like Premiere Pro, After Effects, Media Encoder. And uh, within those applications, you can click in the upper right corner on the beaker icon and uh, it'll actually give you a list of what we're currently working on, what's new in this beta update. And so if you're interested in kind of seeing what we have planned for the near future, if you want to be a part of that discussion, um, definitely check out the new beta program. Um, to find the beta apps within the desktop application, similarly on the left-hand side of the Creative Cloud desktop application, there's a little icon that looks like a, like a test tube beaker and uh, uh, just click on that and it'll show you all the different beta icons. They have a different icon look to them. They're kind of like white and blue, like they're sort of sketched in on a piece of graph paper. Um, and uh, again, they can exist side by side with your shipping version. So if you just want to download it and test it out, it's not going to interfere with your regular production environment. Um, some of the other things that we've been working on, we've done a series of different workflow guides, and these are uh, things that the uh, film and television team are really excited about. Um, these include a, uh, a document that you can download. It's almost 22 pages that talks about the new productions feature and gives you best practices. And we're spending a lot of time looking at different ways of documenting some of the best practices of how to use tools like Premiere Pro, After Effects, 
in a production environment that maybe uh, has to go outside of Creative Cloud. Um, you know, on the high level of post-production, oftentimes there are these processes called turnovers where you're actually taking your edit and moving outside of Creative Cloud to go to color or uh, finishing uh, to do final sound mix on a sound stage, those types of uh, workflows, what we call turnovers. Um, you know, we're actually working on different documents to kind of make sure and help with that type of work. Uh, two that came out, the one for productions, um, obviously a brand new feature. We want to get people off to the right foot on that. We've also come out with one on, uh, it's a Quibi Premiere Pro workflow guide. If you're delivering content uh, for Quibi, dealing with um, you know 16 by 9 or uh, 9 by 16 content, having to you know work with the different uh, uh, aspect ratios and make sure you're delivering the same show in the different aspect ratios that that platform uh, is designed for. Um, we've got a workflow guide to help with that as well. We've also been doing a lot of work talking about, obviously with, with everything going on right now, remote workflows are a big part of everybody's day-to-day -day lives. I'm coming to you live from my home office here, um, and a lot of people are continuing to work uh, in a remote environment and they're dealing with the challenges for that. So we've actually gone through and done a series of different blog entries and some webinars where we talk about some of the different collaborative tools that are built into Creative Cloud that enable you to uh, work in these remote environments. And we've even done one in addition that actually talks about partner technologies that add additional functionality um, that really, really help out from a, uh, a remote perspective. So some of our, our great partners, we've got, we love all of our partners. We've got over 350 of them. I'm not gonna name them all off here, but just some that come to mind. Um, Bebop Technologies has a wonderful managed virtualization solution that we've, uh, we've been doing a lot of work with. Uh, companies like IPV offer a streaming solution. And then even some of the technology partners like SNS um, that make the great Evo uh, shared storage solutions have come up with uh, some unique solutions um, with software that leverages the fact that their asset management creates proxies automatically and allows you to have access to those to those proxies remotely. So uh, you know we're starting to see the industry really um, morph and evolve and uh, come up with new ways of doing post-production. And uh, you know the great thing is with all the services that are packed inside of Creative Cloud, there's a lot of stuff there that's, it's just waiting for you to kind of go in and explore if you need to. So with that, uh, definitely check out, uh, we'll post some of the, uh, the different links on, on screen here for the, uh, the blogs to check out. Adobe's got a great uh, blog entry that has links to the videos, links to some of the webinars, and I think that's a great place to wrap up. Thanks for your time.